Salt 92.3. Hey, it's Kevin Kenny, and security inside the Intercom HQ in New York City is at an all-time high because we have one of music's most dangerous bands and rock and roll's most wanted, the one, the only, the Struts. Hello. I like that. that most song. wanted. Dangerous. Did I get all the monikers? Yes. It was really good. I like it. I appreciate it. I want to start there. I appreciate your showmanship. Because I think a lot of bands these days, or acts, or artists in general, they forget that when we buy tickets to a show, we're buying tickets to a show. But you guys, it's never lost on you guys. Your live shows are just tremendous. Yeah, it's um, something that we've always been very proud of. Uh, wanting to give, you know, the money's worth for, for people coming out and, and showing their support. So, um, yeah. Thank you very much. It's Absolutely. good to. It's nice that you noticed that. Yeah, and you know what else? I mean, speaking of noticing things, your life right now as the Struts are moving a mile a minute, and I'm just curious: Are you able to take a step back and take a deep breath and look around, like on a day like today, where you're doing promo at a New York City radio station? Are you able to look around and sort of like smell the New York City pigeons, if you will? <laughs> well, I mean, it's really cool because, for the most part, we don't. You know, it's quite hard to kind of sit back. And, and take it all in, like you said, with the schedule. But one thing I was thinking about today, which is really cool, is, you know, this isn't our first time in New York, obviously. And um, we've been sort of like coming here on and off for like three years. And then now, and, and not only New York, but a lot of other places in the States, they almost feel like very familiar. So, you don't feel like a tourist anymore. It's quite like I was walking to a restaurant last night and none of it felt like, um, like, oh, this is all really nice and brand new. So you get all of these different homes away from home, which is very unique. So we're really lucky. It's a cool side of being, you know, in a rock and roll band for sure and touring the world. Uh, the differences between the UK crowds and the US crowds are always, always like an often talking point when you do interviews here, I'm sure. Um, but you know, in, in the US, if we like a band and we're enjoying a show, we typically clap, you know, we applaud, we cheer. In the UK, it's a little different, I understand. Uh, they throw cups of hot pee at you. Ah. Uh, well, that was a download festival. I have to hear this story. Where, well, um, throwing urine at festivals is a big thing in the UK. I think it's just big everywhere. There's been lots of artists that have um, come off a lot worse than I did that day. But, um, you know, we, we were st I think it was, it was the first time we've ever played Download and it was in a tent, sort of like maybe 2 p.m., 3 p.m. in the afternoon. And uh, it was very well attended, you know. And um, there was just one bad apple in the crowd, fortunately. And I remember we were sort of like halfway through the set and I was doing my thing and then it, it, the cup actually hit me here. But then it like projected the rest of the, this hot liquid, which tasted um, very unique. Something that I hadn't tasted before and I, and I sort of smelt it and that's when I knew this was urine. Um, which then I, I sort of like stood up and said, if, is there, if, is there, if anyone else has any more pee to throw at me, then do it now. But, and luckily no one did. So <laughs> They didn't own up to it. No. Never no. tasted it before and hopefully never again. No, no. Uh, the, I love that we are having this conversation and talking for the first time ever at a radio station because you really can't tell the Struts' story without talking about radio and how you guys are a UK rock band and your music was sent out to UK radio stations and for whatever reason they didn't see the vision and then you guys started servicing it to the US and the US were like, we love you guys. Mm. So you guys are a UK band that sort of broke in the US first, which yeah. is pretty interesting. It, the whole thing was very strange. Um, you know, we, we grafted and grafted in the UK without any... Um, any like radio support or like not really a lot of press. And then, you know, like you said, all of a sudden, one of our songs was, was taken to, to US radio and it just went, Phew, you know, and we were then immediately told to, you know, pack up your bags, we're going. And then honestly, we've been grafting here ever since for like just over three years. But you know, the cool news is now the, uh, the UK is really starting to take a real genuine interest, which is really cool. You know, um, for instance, Dave Grohl did a, an interview in the UK um, 
where, where he sort of like said amazing things about us. And um, all of a sudden that's, that's turned an awful lot of heads, you know. So we can't help but thank him enough, you know. Uh, but yeah, it's all starting to turn around. It's really cool. You bring up Dave Grohl, obviously a big fan. You guys took you on the road. You've toured, though, with some amazing front men. You talk about Mick Jagger, The Stones, uh, Guns N' Roses, Axl Rose. What did you learn from each of those people? We can share the mic, too, if you want, because we are working with just one. Oh, me. Okay. <laughs> um, actually, I think from as a guitar player, like, you know, there's only four of us, and we always try and put on a big live show. So watching Dave Grohl be a front man with a guitar... I've learned, just picked up a certain thing from him and how he plays and how he interacts with the crowd and stuff like that. So that, for me personally, that's what I've, I've gathered from it. So I, don't I think we've, um, we've had the honor, as you said, to play with uh, the Stones as well. Um, and seeing one thing that was very inspirational there is seeing, they're, they're kind of older boys now, but they have such a laugh with each other. They have such a giggle on stage and the foos do that as well. And you can just tell that they're genuinely, absolutely loving what they're doing and feel very fortunate to be in that, that position and still playing. So that's something that we've all kind of learned from and hope to be in the same boat. Definitely. Any Guns N' Roses stories? Um, no, because we didn't actually meet them. <laughs> the no, you just played the on the bill. The dream is, what I would love to say right now is, yeah, we went back to Axel's hotel room with a load of beautiful Brazilian women. But no, it didn't happen. No? No. I think we. I think I saw his the back of his shirt leave the room once, but that's it. And it was magnificent. Yeah, that's lovely, awesome. lovely back. Lovely shirt. <laughs> now the album starts with a track called "21st Century Dandy." It ends with a track I believe called "Ashes Part 2. Ooh. So in between those track, those tracks, track one and the last track, what story are you guys telling us on this record? Um, it's really cool because there's. Uh, I think we touch on a lot of things you know and we're not kind of like a one trick pony if that makes any sense um you know i wanted to make this album a continuation of of everybody wants um and just basically magnify what everybody wants was doing you know so there's definitely some tracks which are almost like part twos of the first and then there's like some really cool new things put in there as well. But you know, there's, you know, there's, there's death, there's joy, there's love, there's sex, drugs. It's a really wide scope, you know, um, of like emotion and theme. So everyone's in for like a very unique listening experience. It's gonna be really great. A roller coaster, if you will. It yes. Like. Oh, it definitely is. Everything that we wanted from the Axl Rose hotel room story. Yes. <laughs> we can thank Axel's yeah. standoffishness <laughs> for this, uh, this great record we're getting this fall. A, a song that uh, everyone knows and loves from you guys that isn't on the record is One Night Only. Yes. When did it become obvious that that couldn't fit into whatever you guys were cooking up for us? Well, it's all to do with the creative process, really. You know, One Night Only was actually written when we were making the, the reissue of, of Everybody Wants, Ready for America. Um, so that, for instance, you know, it was, Everybody Wants was originally done in the UK, but then once our song at radio started to really take off and we signed a, a, a deal with Interscope in the US, we decided to basically just finish it, finish the first album, you know, and Within that time, we had like a, a couple of really cool recording sessions that we were kind of like, well, you know, can we better this album? You know, if, is there a couple of tracks which we can beat? Um, and, and we did, and we added those. And One Night Only was kind of like this idea that was there um, for quite a while. And it, it took us, honestly, it took us ages to get it right. You know, we went to multiple producers, we went multiple sessions, um, we finally did it, we finally got it right, we brought it to the finish line with, with Butch Walker, who, who was fan abs absolutely fantastic. Um, but, you know, while that was released, we were still writing the second album. And it became very apparent that, you know, One Night Only was definitely gonna be this bridge track, because, you know, it is similar to what we've done in the past. 
you know, and, and you look at a track like Body Talks, for example, it's cool and it's different. You know, and I, if there's anything I could say about the second album is that, you know, there's, there's, there's more new than there is sort of like repeats. And, and I think we felt as a band that One Night Only was a little bit of an echo of things like Could Have Been Me, things like Only Just A Call Away, um, these big halftime choruses sort of things. So that was kind of like One Night Only was sealing you know, the first stage of the Struts and that first album. Definitely. We were all very excited here uh, in New York and really the U.S. over. So, guys, thank you so much. Thanks for having us, mate.